Seattle, Washington. We are broadcasting, we'll be broadcasting live. And this is Tulia Mantelia, and she's in Vicenza, Italy. And do you yes. want to talk a little bit about where you are, Tulia? Yes. Hi, Jessica. Thank you so much for having me today. You're uh, so it's welcome. A great, it's a great pleasure. Um, yeah, I'm basically based in Vicenza right now, so in northern Italy, just in between Verona and Venice. Uh, I'm pretty close to the mountains, so for now it's pretty cold. We don't have snow over here, but it's pretty chilly, yes. <laughs> it, right now, it's a little chilly here. So we had we had some ice last week, so cars were sliding down the road. Yeah. We had ice and some snow last week, but it's really lovely. I'm on the other side of the world in Seattle, so it's really <laughs> lovely in the summer. <clears throat> so I'll talk a little bit about the broadcast and then we'll talk about you we have a lot i have about 10 questions for you yeah. that you can answer and i'm interested in hearing about all of your tours that you do so here i am with my wine notes my wine spectator and my starbucks cup and we are speaking in front of a live international audience this particular broadcast will be uh it will be next friday which is what day is next friday tulia the is second it? <laughs> second okay february 2nd will be when this broadcast is a live stream and this will be broadcast on youtube facebook linkedin it's also will be broadcast on facebook so a very international broadcast i am i'm jessica lewis i'm a marketing and digital digital strategist for the brands you know and love i have a youtube broadcast a live broadcast on twitter youtube linkedin and facebook and usually we have a video every Friday of one of our fabulous people. And thank you so much for being my guest, Julia. No, so thank you so much for inviting me. You're so me. welcome. So let's talk a little bit about your background. Yeah. Um, so, well, I started with a bachelor degree in uh, uh, languages for publishing and then with a master degree in uh, comparative literatures in Verona. I studied in Verona for five years. And I live there, so it's it's pretty much the town of my heart. I, I really love that place. I uh, spent so many lovely days there. And I also uh, started to get to know more wine in Verona because obviously because of in Italy and that, that's one of the most important fairs in, in the world for wine. Uh, and then I um, I also have a couple of master's course in hospitality management, uh, in wine hospitality management. Uh, I currently work as a PR account uh, manager at Studio Crew, a wine communication agency based in Vicenza here in northern Italy. Uh, we deal with about 50 clients, uh, 50 wineries all over the country, so from north to south, and uh, my my main uh, task is uh, organizing tastings, both online and in person, in Italy and abroad, and also press trips. I love I love designing and organizing press trips, and that's also what I do in my free time <laughs> as a freelance. I host and design tours around the Verona and Vicenza. Well, tell me about the tell me about the press trip. What do the press trips entail? Well, um, I, as I as I said, I love I love uh, designing press trips. Um, it it all depends on the clients we are uh, working with um, and the press they want to involve in these trips. Um, I remember one of my favorite uh, trip. One of my favorite trips was one from last year. Uh, I spent about a week in central Italy. We traveled around Tuscany and Umbria, discovering producers from those regions uh, and also from Marque. So it was pretty long, a uh, pretty long journey with uh, five amazing journalists from the US. And uh, we spent a lovely time there. Uh, and what I always try to do with my trips, with the trips I organize, uh, is to include cultural and literal literature, sorry, uh, aspects of our culture, our country. So, for example, we spent an afternoon in Florence, 
and I designed a tour, a wine and literature tour in Florence. So I oh, tried to, lovely. Yes, <laughs> I tried to match a wine and an author that like who lived in uh, in Florence, starting from the Renaissance to the late uh, 19th century, and uh, it was pretty interesting also for me because what working in wine uh, allowed me is to constantly keeping up to date and uh, the possibility to learn to learn more and more every day so it's it's a pretty cool job i really like it what well, sounds so when you talk about literature do you go to the uh, author's home or what do you do there also um it was uh, not this time but that's what i'm working on <laughs> for the next press trip uh, i'd love to involve more also like the touristic associations uh, all over Italy, for example, in this case, uh, from Florence. So I, I'd like to partner with them and say, I, I want to do this. Uh, that's why I'm also working on my uh, official uh, tour guide license. So I'm, I'm trying to uh, take this exam also this, this upcoming year. So fingers crossed, I will be able to do so. Um, so yeah, this particular tour I hosted in Florence, it was a walking tour, just a very relaxed stroll around the city center. Uh, but it was so interesting to see how many authors lived there and how many of them actually loved wine already back to Renaissance period. So it was really fun to do. Oh, it sounds wonderful. So. Uh, let's talk about your wine education. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about your wine. Well, you're in the middle of a wine region, but you want to talk a little bit about your background in wine or your wine education? Yes. So I've always uh, loved learning about wine since I was a child. Uh, my grand, my grandparents and my uh, my dad, especially my dad, has always been keen on wine. So since I was very little, I remember one of my very first memories was uh, like I was drinking wine, obviously a very small amount of wine <laughs> from my dad's glass. And I was like five, six years old. So I've always been interested in, in wine. Um, thanks to my job that I started almost three years and a half ago, I had the opportunity to um, come closer to the world of wine world, basically. Uh, I started uh, also my certifications. I'm currently a WSIT uh, second level certificate. Um, and now I'm starting for my third level <laughs> certification that I hope to um, to get by the end of this year. So <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, I, I have yeah. I have the um, reset too also. So I like yes. to do the three three also. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So okay. yeah, you're planning fingers on the, you're planning on the three. Okay. Yeah. And do you think that the the Wine and Spirits Educational Trust two did that open doors for you? Yeah, definitely. Um, especially here in Italy, because here in Italy we have our national education trust that is called ICE. A mm -hmm. A I S. So, um, but having the WSAT allows you to to work uh, internationally. So for me, it's better also because I've always loved the languages and the possibility to work abroad. So uh, I think the WSAT is the best certification in when it comes to wine, and if you want to, if you want to work on an international level, for sure. Okay, and I I, I think that's great too. I want to do three also. Yeah. So what what inspired you to pursue a career in the wine industry? And I think you've talked about that a little bit, but do you want to elaborate a little bit? Yes, yes, with pleasure. Um, when it came to Basically, I when I finished my studies, I had to decide what to do. <laughs> so uh, I knew I wanted to work in the uh, communication field and with languages because that's what I studied. I've always loved uh, tourism and books. So 
I ended up in, uh, in at Studio Crew in Vicenza uh, because at the end of the story, <laughs> I, I thought that wine is uh, the best way to share knowledge, share cultures, uh, because behind a single bottle of wine, there's the work of the winemaker, the work of the family, the work of the, the manager, but also the work of the uh, the land, the, the wine growers, and the wine is culture. So I've always loved culture, and that's why I decided to. Okay, I said I wanna I wanna work in the wine in the wine sector uh, because it's so interesting, and I can link it to all of my interests. I think this is a thing that I couldn't have done with anything else. So that's why I choose wine. <laughs> do you think that, well, so Italy and France, do you think that the wine jobs in the wine industry are more predominant than they might be, let's say in Oregon and Washington or in the United States? Mm, I wouldn't say so. I mean, when, when it comes to communication, because obviously I'm more expert in on the communication of the wine side i think it's pretty much the same of course when it comes to uh, works inside the winery itself uh, maybe it's easier to find a wine job in italy or in france because there are simply there there are more wineries maybe compared mm -hmm. to oregon or the us or any other wine regions around the world um uh, no, I would I would say that from the communication side, it's it's pretty much the same. I'd say. Okay, and what do you do at Studio Crew? Uh, What's Studio yeah. Crew all about? Yeah, so we are a PR and communication agency uh, based uh, here in Vicenza, and we have three different uh, sections. We are divided in three different offices. We have the international office where I work the Italian press office and the digital branch uh, that deals with all the social media website stuff. I personally work in, on the inter, in the international office. Uh, so we deal with the um, foreign press every day <laughs> from all over the world. And we organize tastings, visit press trips for them. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty interesting and I love it. Uh, it allows me to speak in English every day, but also in French, uh, Spanish, uh, German. So it's, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it sounds, I, I, gosh, I love it. It sounds so great. So what, do you, what are some of your challenges as faced as a woman in the wine industry? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Um, I'd say that, unfortunately, especially in Italy, um, for a woman, for a young woman like me, <laughs> in this case, um, it's not that easy. I always, I always say that I'm lucky because I work with the, um, with like uh, foreign countries where uh, this stigma is not that uh, present, uh, like as it is in Italy, because uh, in Italy. May, most of the wineries are still run for, for uh, by the old generations. So like 60 years old men. Uh, so there, I often, uh, I often find uh, it's not a, a kind of wall, but it's something like I'm older than you. I'm a man. So I have to teach you how to do things. <laughs> so sometimes it's, it's not that easy to uh, gain their um, tr trust. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, especially when it comes to communications and such, because uh, sometimes they, yeah, they think they can do better than you. Mm -hmm. This is my point of view because I'm I'm young and sometimes I don't know there are um people that probably see me like their daughters or their sons or their nephews so it's not that easy as a young woman here but um i'm happy with what i do and uh with the people i deal with every day so 
foreign journalists and foreign um, countries where this is not so present. So I'm I'm happy with it. Okay, so you feel like do you feel like you're making change in that area? Yeah, slowly yes, because um, many many wineries, for example, are uh, now run by the new generations. So people around my age, more or less. So it's mm -hmm. easier to communicate. It's easier to see, uh, to be on the same page. You know, so that that's easier uh, because I think that especially in Italy, because of this very very long traditional in the wine sector. It's not easy to say, let's do this new thing. Trust me, it, it can work. <laughs> so, um, for example, um, the best example in this case I can think about is that uh, Italy and France has always been, have always been rivals <laughs> when it comes to wine. And uh, now we are starting to work, for example, with a French press, um, mostly in the Conegliano Valdobbiadene area, so the Prosecco Bubbles area. And it's not that common, I'd say, because of obviously France is known for champagne bubbles and such, but it's really, really um, nice to see how the French press is, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really interested in the Prosecco Bubbles. So uh, sometimes I think, oh, but it's all in our head. <laughs> it's all in our heads. So we just have to share knowledge, share cultures. And that's what I love about wine. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I Well, what I love about it, too, is many of the people in the wine industry travel and are well-traveled. So they're the same kind of people. But there, I've found that there are so many people, like, they've come to visit me. Or I just interviewed Teresa and she lives in Vancouver and Tara yeah. came from Vancouver to come see me. And so it's kind of fun to meet with different people and have this group of people that we all kind of connect. Yes, it's amazing. It's an amazing thing. I, I feel so lucky to be involved in this community, in this white community, worldwide community. So I hope yeah, to I see like you the world in Italy. <laughs> yes, I'd like to, I'd love to come to Italy. Um, what are some of the most important skills you have developed in your career? Um, I'd say um, what I learned more in these years is, well, first of all, organizational skills, <laughs> because you have to basically be a tourist guide, an organize, a travel designer, but also you, you have to entertain people. Uh, you have to um, talk to them about your culture. So be a tour guide. So you, you have to be many, many things uh, all at once. Um, but that's what I love because I love doing many things uh, at the same time. Uh, so it's the right job for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and also to, uh, I think, as I said, there's always room for learning more and more every day. So I love to learn uh, new things from my colleagues, for, from the winemakers we work with, from other journalists and people like you, Jessica. So it's always uh, like to, yeah, to become a better person through wine culture and tourism because uh in these past few years uh in italy wine is uh very much linked to the slow tourism like a uh, sustainable tourism the the sustainability uh, theme topic is very felt here in italy when it comes to wine um so yes it's um it's nice and I like it. <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about trends in the wine industry? So I know there. So what what do you think some of the new trends are in the wine industry? So you're talking about sustainability. Yeah. Is that, is that your dog in the background? Or uh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> He's outside. Dog? He's currently outside. outside. You should bring him in. <laughs> Um, no, it's because he, he, see, he sees people walking down the street, so yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, 
so trends, new trends. As I said, maybe a more a more attention to bubbles that are not champagne. So not only prosecco, but also the Spanish cava or uh -huh. okay. the Italian Francia Corta, the trend to dock. So more attention to the bubbles that are not champagne. Bubbles, and okay. then the big, big <laughs> uh, topic of low or no alcohol. Yes. Uh, yes, because now I'm. I'll be in uh, in Paris in a couple of weeks for the Vin Expo and Wine Paris Fair, and I saw there are lots of master classes, lots of um, talks about the low no alcohol. So I think this will be a big trend this year, and I'm curious to know and to to know and to see how it develops. I'm curious to try some low no <laughs> alcohol wines and see and taste how they are. And yes, as I said, the sustainability, the environmentally friendly uh, practices in the vineyards, uh, in the um, in the cellar. So these are the main topics I see. Um, for this year i'd say what's yeah. attraction to the new bubbles what what's what's the attraction to cop all of the bubble kava and is there is do you see something coming with that or is it just all of the bubbles are great for holidays or what do you think no or uh, it's just very luxury mm, or no i'd say that for example <laughs> Obviously, because I always think about the uh, comparison between uh, the French Champagne and the Prosecco or the French Porta or the Trento Doc. Uh, I see that there's um, a new attention to them in the terms of elegant bubbles. So not only the happy hour bubbles, I'd say, <laughs> because especially here in Veneto where I live, Prosecco is the is the happy hour <laughs> uh, wine that we drink. Um, but there's this new approach to them when, so I think they're more elegant, more sophisticated bubbles, um, and but not necessarily considered luxury. I don't know if you, <laughs> if you understand what I mean, but uh, they are accessible bubbles, especially Prosecco because everyone more or less everyone can afford a bottle of Prosecco, but it's, it's, uh, it's a new kind of approach to this, this bubble, uh, new conscience about them. So it's not just the happy hour or anything. It's just the, uh, especially with the Conegliano, the OCG appellation, they're doing this amazing work <laughs> with this uh, new, uh, conception let's say of bubbles of these bubbles um they're working hard uh, to communicate them in a new uh, way so i wish them all the best because i i think this is where the direction we're going towards this year yeah okay and what do you think the what do you think brought on the i know some of this well let's talk about covid real quick so yeah. how do you think Okay, we've all kind of gone through. COVID. How do you think the world's changed since COVID started until now? And how do you think that that changed your job? Yeah. Sorry, that's my phone. Home. Oh, <laughs> home okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but um, I think that when I mean, uh, actually, it's curious because during COVID, our company studio crew, um, so. Uh, took a big leap <laughs> in the wine communications because we were the one of the first uh, agencies who started with the online tastings, webinars uh, with the journalists during COVID. And we keep doing them because we saw that in we saw we see that journalists for example sometimes they just want to spend some time at home <laughs> uh, with their families and have some time for their themselves and because they're always traveling uh, so that's why we keep uh, doing these and they are really appreciated still nowadays uh, and i think that this is something we uh, we learned from the covid uh, period because uh, slower rhythms slower uh, 
life, way of life. I, I don't know how to say that, but um, online tastings are still a big thing for, for me that COVID okay. left. So basically... Are you still doing online tastings? Yeah, yeah. Um, especially when, like, during the colder months, so from November to mid-March, where the vineyards are not that <laughs> beautiful to visit or because it's muddy, because it's cold, because it's rainy or snowy. So uh, we tend to organize them during these months. Now we have, for example, we have nine online tastings from now to mid-March. Um, and we are all overbooked. So, yeah, I think they, they're a, a good way to communicate wine, uh, to give the opportunity to journalists to learn about a winery with the winemaker or the general manager or whatever and taste the wines together in a small amount of time because our online tastings takes like uh, they last no longer than one hour so it's pretty easier easy for for everyone and i think and that's we, something we learned uh, from covid <laughs> yes i think the covid uh was really inspirational for entrepreneurs i think i think there was a lot of entrepreneurial activity that happened and a lot of family activity that happened during covid that yeah. was really yeah. nice um you know it's hard sometimes to see the silver lining but i think there were a lot of silver linings in covid and on your on your online tastings do you ship them the wine so yes. are you are you in the winery with the winemaker and then you ship the person the wine so yeah, yeah. So basically, we ship the wines from the winery to the journalist, basically, and we host the webinar for, from our offices in Vicenza, and the winemaker from their winery or from wherever they feel more comfortable to to do so. Um, so yeah, we ship the wines and we taste them all together. Okay, okay, that sounds great, and so. We've got about three minutes here. So do you want to talk about some of your favorite Italian wines or wines that you recommend and what you would pair with Italian wine? Of course. Um, I, I'd i say that one of my favorite wines uh, from Italy is the um, Trentino Alto Adige, Gewurz Traminer. <laughs> I love okay. it. The, the floral background, the fruits, the pineapple. They're, it's so delicious. I love it. <laughs> and I love to pair it with um, sushi. Okay. I'm a sushi, a sushi lover. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's uncommon for, uh, for an Italian, but yes, <laughs> I love sushi and I love give it stamina. So I think that's the best pairing. Uh, but I also love bubbles and more structured wines. Um, I would never say no to a good Brunello or Chianti. I recently discovered also, thanks to my job, uh, the a smaller appellation of Chianti, the Chianti Rufina, uh, not too far from Florence. It's so good. It's really, really good. And so I drink pretty much everything, but my heart belongs to Gilbert's Terminator. <laughs> okay. And... Uh, I'm going to ask you, oh, tell us a little bit about your area. So Verona, yeah. Vicenza, what's there to see and do? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, well, um, I'm happy to, to answer this question. Uh, so um, where I live, I live in the outskirts of Vicenza, in the province of Vicenza, and I'm pretty close to the mountains, and they are called the Little Dolomites. <laughs> yes. So uh, there are beautiful mountains uh, near here. Uh, we are close to Lake Garda, super close, like 45 minutes by car. Uh, and uh, we can reach Verona in 40 minutes, but also Venice in like one hour. So we are really in between. And in Verona, I'd give you three of my favorite spots in Verona that are uh, the Juicy Garden, it's an hidden gem, and not even the uh, Verona people know about it. <laughs> it's a lovely and beautiful place. And the um, St. Peter Castle um, uh, 
uh, square from where you can see all the the town from above it's it's gorgeous and um and um, piazza delle erbe so one of the two main squares not when the where where there's the arena but the other one mm -hmm. uh, there's um gorgeous palace called the palazzo maffei and inside it there's a beautiful museum so these are my three favorite spots in verona I think I love Verona. Verona is so beautiful. I've I've gotten on buses and have gone all over everywhere, but I love Verona and um I like that whole area there a lot. And sometimes more the smaller areas I like than the most popular tourist areas. I've been to the pop, you know, been to Rome. I love Rome. I've been to Florence, but I, I also love going to very small cities and looking at all of, of the artwork and the churches and things that yes. are hidden there. I agree. So <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Tulia. No, I, I you really enjoyed me. talking to you. Thank and you. Sorry, I my dog in my phone. <laughs> What's that? Oh, the, no, oh, the I dog? Sorry for my dog in my phone. No, <laughs> during the no worries. So this will be broadcast. You said it's on February 2nd? Yeah, the 2nd. Okay. <laughs> so look at my calendar back there. So we'll be broadcasting then. And then prior to that, so this is going to be in the Women and Wine series. So I'll have you Great. featured on social media for Women and Wine. And thank you so much. And we'll end the broadcast now. Thank you, Jessica. Ciao. Thank you so much. I hope to see you soon. <laughs> I hope to. I want to meet you in person. Thank you. Bye.